Hi there, welcome back to North Lake Photographic Workshops. I don't know about you, but over the last couple of weeks, I've been doing a lot that uh, has made me feel pretty inspired about printing. And uh, I mean, it started off with Carrick out in, uh, out in Yosemite, and uh, I haven't even gotten to that video yet, but I'll, I'll show you some of that soon. Um, but then also last week to Toronto uh, to visit with uh, the great Bob Carney and uh, been really getting a great response on that one. Um, and if you haven't seen that video yet, uh, I'll link it up here right now. But uh, yeah, Bob was my first in-person studio visit, which is a series that I hope to continue doing. And uh, I've actually got kind of a big surprise person that I'm working on right now. And um, I don't know, I have to wait for a response from them. Uh, um, it's the first time I've not gotten a no response, so I'm really hoping. Cross your fingers for me. Um, anyway, uh, cross your fingers for us, because it'll be a really cool, cool thing. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, I came back from Bob's just feeling like uh, I, I was shot out of a can and I just wanted to work, but I had some print orders to do, and I did those. Um, those are all being shipped out as I speak, so if you've ordered one of those prints, they're on their way very soon, if not already. Uh, and thank you, thank you again for your support uh, on that. Uh, the holiday print this year was the, uh, the, the Icelandic horse, and, and uh, there was a real nice response to it, um, which was great, and, uh, but not such a great response that I won't be able to get to them all, and so sit tight. Everybody's going to be having theirs in the next week or so, less than a week. Um, anyway, so I uh, came back feeling like I was shot out of a cannon, and I really wanted to get to work on things, and I had to fill those orders, but now I'm at the, the rare point where you know, I can actually work on something I really want to work on. And uh, a lot of times I'll play around in the dark room and I'll learn some new things or I'll do some gimmicky shot that I've worked on or I'll do something from my history or something like that. But I've kind of been ignoring Iceland all along. And uh, for those of you that know, Iceland has been a big part of my career over the last 20, 25 years almost now. And uh, However, I've never really done anything with it, you know, I mean, I've had a couple of shows with uh, Halstead Gallery and, and that work has, has shown up in, um, in other, other shows of mine and uh, even in some other books of mine and things, but I've never really done anything with, you know, the work itself and really delved into it. And, you know, as an artist, I really want to do that and I'm, I'm feeling this kind of tug now. I'm getting a little bit older and, uh, you know, talking to Bob a little bit about age off camera and you know, I'm feeling like I still want to keep moving forward and there's a lot of things I really want to do still, but, um, you know, it's kind of getting to time where I, I, I should start taking stock of other things as well and, and things that I've done and start working on some of the work I've done and, you know, get it out there in my, my hand, my, my printing and not let somebody just find the negatives someday or throw them all away or whatever. But so anyway, uh, what I've been talking about doing for a long time, and I've been talking with other friends of mine and other photographic artists, that I, I want to do a uh, uh, portfolios. Um, and I've done so much work in, in Iceland that people say, do a book, do a book. But, you know, not that that's a cliche, cliche thing, but a lot of people have done that, including like three people that I've taken along uh, before have done some really beautiful books, you know, Tim Rudman included, and, and Graham Vassie, and, you know, um, and, and uh, I can't think of others right now, uh, but I know that there are those. And, and that's kind of, I just never got to that. You know, I mean, I, I really wanted to do it, um, but, you know, other people did it. And I just kind of didn't want to seem like I was sort of glomming onto their, their show or anything like that. And, you know, um, and, you know, Iceland did get a bit done, uh, if you don't mind me uh, saying, you know, although I still love the place, but it's been seen a lot. And anyway, so... Uh, but it's time to kind of get to my work on it, you know, I mean, just because it's been seen a lot and a lot of people have seen it now doesn't mean that, you know, work I did 20 years ago there isn't still viable or still somewhat important, at least to me. So what I've done is I've decided that, uh, you know, rather than do a book on it at this point, I'm thinking that I would do a series of portfolios. I mean, I've done so much work over the last 20, 25 years there that you know, it's hard to pigeonhole it into any one thing, you know, I mean, I've got, um, you know, I've, I've gone through so much as a photographer since I've been going there, you know, I mean, you know, I've kind of felt like a straight, pure landscape photographer when I began, and then I started being more interested in the environment and more interested in the, the way that people had, uh, had affected the environment there, and, 
and then I got into some of the buildings and the old structures and then you know it's like each trip I get into something different um, even down to the time when I just took the Polaroid and I just took pictures and then I I took uh, my my cell phone and shot pictures where I used the Polaroid as a finished kind of piece of the puzzle uh, you know I've always been doing things there and always kind of moving forward but I never really got back to the work as a whole so that's one of the things that I'm trying to do right now I think and uh, you know I want to create a series of portfolios I may never get to it but what I'm doing is I'm going to start documenting the process now and I thought that I'd take you along with me on it and uh, where do I start, right? You know, but um, I, there's always been this one image and I've had it hanging on my wall here. Uh, you know, I printed a little tiny proof print of it here. You can see these basalt cl cliffs in a place called Dirole in South Iceland. And it was from a trip that I did in back in 2015. And there were some really fun people on that trip, a good, good South Coast trip. I think that John Sheets was on that trip, who's a great photographer and printer in his own right. And uh, Clay Harmon, I think, was on that trip. And if I'm not mistaken, Timothy Hyde was on that trip, and uh, Sandra Kawano, and uh, boy, I'm telling you, um, uh, maybe Danielle Mers, who I haven't seen in years from Germany. Um, but uh, there were a lot of great people on that trip, and 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 this it was memorable. And this was, you know, as I was saying, I've developed as a photographer over the years that I've been going there, and this was kind of when I started feeling like I was really hitting my stride, right? You know, I mean. This is one of the reasons I didn't want to do a book after visiting once or twice is because, you know, you really need to develop a relationship with a place. And when I first started going there, some of my early photographs were really great, I thought, in my own mind. And some of them have done very well for me, but they weren't really quite there yet. You know, I mean, I didn't really know the place well. I mean, the thing is, I would take much and I do take m much different photographs there now than I did when I first started going there before I began this relationship. And. This relationship's now going on for 20 some years and 40 some odd trips and uh, you know, different situations, different mental situations, different uh, uh, you know, problems on some trips, whatever, you know. I mean, I've had like a whole trip blown because of a leaked, leaked back, uh, a bad film back on my Hasselblad. And uh, you know, there's just been so many things that I've been through there. So I thought it was time to start getting to it. Anyway, and this photograph is what I decided to start at. So another reason I started this one is because I had this file of it, right? You know, I'll take you over here. I had this file that, uh, that was, um, you know, already made. I had done a really high resolution scan of the file back in the day, back in 2015 is when this was, I think I said. So, um, this is the image here, and as you can see, this is the image there. Now, this was a really high resolution scan from the negative that I did. But unfortunately, I went through the process of making a negative yesterday from that file, and it wasn't quite up to snuff, uh, if you know what I mean. Um, I may have some clips of it, of my, my process yesterday uh, in this video here that you can see. But anyway, it just wasn't there. It was clipped in certain ways, and it just didn't really... It wasn't really great. It came off a, a flatbed scanner and I've been redoing a lot of my um, old negatives in uh, my new scanning method, which is behind me here taking pictures with my, my D810 and my D850 now um, and tethering them to my computer here through uh, a program uh, called Capture One. But I, I tether the camera here, I take a picture of the negative and I get quite a nice, uh, a, quite a nice copy of the negative that I can work with. Um, here we go, we got it right now. Anyway, I can get quite a nice negative uh, that way and uh, I'll be doing that uh, here through the process. But one of the things is, is that I had the file from the years, from, you know, seven years ago, but I could not find the negative. So I'm doing that right now. So uh, we're gonna do a little bit of that first. I even had a negative from this print that I did, but uh, although it looks great as a nice small print when I enlarged it and went into a, a a bigger file, I could see the the, uh, the shortcomings of the negative and of the file itself. So, time to make a new one. We're going to get to it now. And uh, let's see. So, I've gone into 2015 here, and I'm hoping it's going to be close because I've done this before. I mean, I've dug it out before, uh, but once again, never printed it any larger than this, so it's going to be fun. So, let's get over to the light table and try to dig up the negative.
So uh, one of the big problems I have, and I think a lot of photographers maybe like me have that problem, is that uh, I'm not the best archivist of my work. I mean, I basically know where everything is, but um, you know, as far as like being able to have keywords or anything like that to be able to look into my work, I, I'm not very good at that. I just kind of know when I made the work and I know what I made and it stays in my head and I can go back through it. And it's kind of a nice surprise to go through these old negatives and find things that I forgot I did. Uh, but unfortunately I have to go through them when I'm looking for something like this. I just can't lay my hands on it real easily. But I do know that that file was made or that photograph was made in 2015 and I have my 2015 folder here. So we're going to look through here and hopefully I'm going to find it pretty quickly. And I can see already that some of these images are ones that were pretty important to me. Um, at, at They've been printed before, and, and I've uh, I've worked with them before. I can see, you know, the beach at Reynes Fiara here, and I can see uh, Skogarfoss, and uh, this is Dedafoss here. This is a really nice image that I like to work with. So these are all images that are probably going to end up being in one of these portfolios. So I'm going to save them aside here. Um, and the reason they're loose in there is that I was I was probably going to work on them before anyway. So. But what I've got to do here now is go through these other ones and see if I can't find it easy enough. And, uh, oh yeah, so, see this is why it's hard for me to decide what I'm going to do is I can already see so many things that, that might be nice prints to start on. But I'm going to stick with my, uh, see these are winter and that's not a winter scene so but I did go several times that year so it could be in here not a big deal oh, see these aren't winter this is a sp oh this might oh god there there it is okay this is the one this is the negative sheet so I'm just going to close this out right now I'm going to put these in here so I know where they are for future uh, future printing and I'm going to set that off to the side here yeah, so right here, yeah, this is the image that I want. But as you can see, there's, you know, there's a whole page of, of what could be really nice images here. But uh, there was a reason I chose that one in the beginning, and I can see why now. I mean, out of all of them, it stands off the page for me. It's just a little more lyrical in its in its composition and the way that the waves are are coming up, the way that it, it it's in it's in you know in uh, you know in respect to the cliffs behind it being dark as well. So that's the one. So what I'm going to do is we're going to pull this negative out here. I'm going to be real careful with it because it's very clean and it probably hasn't been you know, other than that first time I had it out here. It hasn't been out. So I'm going to take this over to my other light table here at the copy stand, and we're going to make uh, we're going to make a copy of this. So let's get to that. So it's time to get this on the light table here, and uh, it's the one image at the very bottom here, and I want to make sure that I'm going to shoot it through the. Uh, I'm going to shoot it at the emulsion side. So I'm actually inverting it. Um, and that way I'm not actually shooting through the film plane when I'm doing it. So it just adds one less layer of, of things to go through. So I'm going to set this in here. And as you can see over here, we're going to get it up in the center of the crosshairs. Okay. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is zoom in on it. And we're going to check my focus. Now normally I would do this focus electronically, but I'm for some reason the 850 I haven't got it uh recognized by or this lens hasn't been recognized by Capture One, so I haven't been able to control it. Good to go. 
go. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is make the exposure for this, and uh, we're going to see where I go. Here we go. Now, yeah, that looks good. Um, however, I'm going to change the exposure. We're going to do this once again. Let's go back here over to the camera. Try another exposure, F20. It's looking better. I'm seeing some detail down here in the sand, which is what I want. Um, I'm seeing detail up here in the, uh, in the cliff. Um, however, I'm gonna give it one more shot just to make sure that I haven't, uh, you know, I can go one more. Let's see here. Let's go up to 22. Make another exposure. All right, here we go. I'm liking this. Um, however, once again, I'm going to give it another try. Let's, we're going to go up to, let's just go all the way up to uh, F32 and where the, see where that pulls me. There's our image. going to work for me. Okay, now that I've got my file, I'm going to export it over to Photoshop. I'm going to work my, uh, my magic on it, and then I'm going to output it as a digital negative, and then we're going to go into the darkroom and try another uh, print of this. Only this time, rather than making a full 10 by 10, which is the way that I'm planning on printing this uh, portfolio at this time, is I'm going to do a smaller proof negative of that because I don't want to be expending all of that uh, that um, the materials to do a big print if it's not really what I want yet or if it's not the, quite the negative I want. So yeah, let's go give it a try. So as I had hoped, I got a really nice file out of this one. So um, I've gone ahead and I've worked it up and uh, gotten it to where I think it's going to look pretty good, but you never know. And that's why I've only done a little six by six negative like this, because I don't want to be doing a full 10 by 10 and using all the palladium and then finding out I have to go back and tweak the negative in some way. So, uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do is coat a piece of paper right now, and I'm not going to bother to mask this negative because it's just going to be a proof negative, And in all likelihood, I'm going to have to make it again. So, uh, yeah, let's just make a coating here. All right, so we're going to take out, and I'm only going to measure out four drops of each one of my solutions here. And therefore, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Well, okay, so we're going to go five. I'm a man of omens, so we'll see. One, two, three, four, five. And next, I'm going to put in a little tween, as I always do, for the HPR paper. By the way, I'm printing on the Hanamule Platinum rag. It's, it's, it's my paper here. So anyway, uh, I'm going to take a piece of a pencil here and put a little dot in each corner where I think I'm going to be needing some uh, emulsion. Set that off to the side. Gonna get my brush wet here. I always just dab my brush off a little bit and gonna run it out here. Now what I'm gonna do is keep it in between my uh, my dots 
and I should get full coverage of my negative. A lot of times I'll use a last little bit just to cover it anywhere that might look a little lighter to me and get the correct coverage. And that's looking good. So it's going to rinse off my brush and uh, my shot glass here. Put those off to the side. So there. We've got a good coating. I'm going to give it a little bit of a dry with the uh, hair dryer here. And now we're going to put this into the uh, plate burner for nine minutes is what I always do in my box to so get a full black. So we'll see what happens here. All right, into the plate burner we go. So we're gonna give that a full nine minutes and uh, process it and see what happens. Okay, so our image is exposed. And again, you can see it's just a six by six image this time. I'm gonna do the final at 10 by 10, but I just don't wanna do that on a, on a you know, until I know that I've got my negative treat and the way it's going to go. So let's process this thing and cross our fingers. Get my potassium oxalate here. And here goes the pour. Oh boy. Now, I'm liking the way it looks, but it's a little on the muddy side. So I'm thinking what I want to do with this is, uh, Go back, I'm going to tweak the negative a little bit, brighten it up a bit. And then I'll do another test just like this one and we'll see what happens from there. All right, stick with me. So, as you can see here, I mean the print looks pretty good, but what I want, really wanted to do was to spark up the highlights in here a little bit more, you know, just to give it a little bit more contrast. So what I had to do was go back in and rework the negative. Um, and I did that. So I went through the process of reworking the negative. I printed out another negative and I've just done another proof print. So let's go check it out. Hang on one second. Okay, so now we'll go through and we'll see how this went again. And uh, with any luck, yeah, see, sparked up the highlights a little bit there. You can see I didn't coat the whole thing, but once again, I'm not really interested in this print. This is just a proof. Yeah, I mean, it looks really nice. I, uh, I'm happy with it. My only reluctance is, is that this will dry to the middle uh, rather than drying down or drying up. And although it looks good right now, it might muddy up a little bit. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is do one more iter iteration of the negative just a slight difference in it, just to spark it up a little bit. I'm going to just add overall lightness and uh, maybe just a tad of contrast before I print the negative out again. And then I'm going to try it again at this size and uh, with any luck we'll be there. So stick with me. Let's try it again. Okay. So here I go on what could be my final try. Um, what I did is I went back in and I, uh, I did a little bit more work on the highlights in the water and also in the sky on this one. So hopefully added a little bit more contrast and give me a satisfactory print. And if it does work out, then I'm going to go on and make the big negative. So let's see how it goes here. All right. Oh yeah. I think I like that. I don't know if you can 
notice here, but over here in the uh, rock face, I also did a little bit of uh, lightening of that so that I can see some more detail in the cliff face. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of liking this. So we'll see here. I'm going to run it through the clearing bath and uh, and do a complete dry on it before um, before I make my decision. So uh, yeah, stick with me. It's looking good. It's looking really good. This is why I work on a smaller uh, file also, or a, you know, smaller print proof, because now what I can do is I can go back into the original file. I sized it down to make the negative, so I have plenty of resolution, so I can make a larger negative of the exact same file, so I know that the bigger print will come out exactly like this one. So as soon as I'm sure that this is the way to go, we're going to do that. Stick with me. Okay, so here it is, the big negative that I've been talking about, and uh, it's looking really good. Had it out there on the light table and checked it out, and it's looking really, really fine. It looks pretty much exactly the same as the, uh, the small one, the proof one. So uh, what I've got to do now is I'm going to have to get this all masked up, because unlike the prints behind me, I'm going to mask the edges of the negative, and I'm going to mask the edges of the paper before I coat it. So that's just something that I like to do. It's a matter of personal preference. Um, I just like to have nice clean edges on my prints. So let's get to it. Uh, next up, uh, we'll get this masked up, we'll mask up the paper, coat it, and then I'll be making a print of this. And uh, I think then I'll wrap it up for today. This will be the, uh, this will be part one because this is going to be a full gum over print when I'm done with it. But as you can see, there's a lot going, there's a lot uh, that goes into making a really good print. And this is just the palladium layer that I've been working on today. So once I get this all worked out and once I start printing out the rest of the prints in this uh, portfolio, it'll be a lot different. Um, but I just wanted to see, uh, to show you what it takes to really get this off the ground and really get a nice final print that I'm happy with. So we're not there yet. Stick with me. All right. Okay, so I've had to put out a bigger tray here, obviously, and uh, I've got my potassium oxalate already in the tray, so let's go with this. Ha ha ha, oh yeah, that's what I wanted to see. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's freaking beautiful. I'm really happy about this. As you can see, this took better part of the day just to get it right for the first one um, you know you just can't expect to go sitting in the dark go into the dark room and, and come out of uh, you know there with a bunch of good prints in a day yeah this is really nice I see one little aberration up here but it's nothing that I can't uh, that I can't spot out in the end so yeah what I'm gonna do now is gonna go through the clearing baths and dry it out, uh, wash it, dry it out. And then, uh, like I say, I think I'm gonna split this into two parts and we're gonna go to the second part uh, tomorrow. And what I'll do then is we'll have to size the image um, with gelatin sizing. And then I'm gonna lay down a gum, at least one gum coat, maybe a couple more. And I'll show you what happens to the print at that time. But yeah, this is, this is beautiful. I'm so happy with it. Hard work pays off. Lots of proofs pay off. Six of them it took me. But, but as you can see, 
It's a really nice print. It's really singing very nicely, as I like to say. So, yeah. Woohoo! I'm happy. Well, hey, listen, I hope you'll come back for part two. Uh, look for it uh, linked up here when I finally have it done. Um, like I say, I'm going to do that tomorrow. But I am going to get this video together and release it so that you can see what's going on. And uh, thanks a lot. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And please tell a friend. It's really, uh, really important. Uh, the more the merrier. Getting a lot of great comments from you out there, and I'm getting a lot of uh, mail. Um, if you haven't uh, looked at my Patreon, please do, because uh, that's very, um, it's very helpful and very supportive. Uh, so, uh, yeah, look below, and you'll see a link to my Patreon page. And, uh, yeah, thanks a lot. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.